after a beautiful little 13-month-old boy was horribly scalded in hot bathtub water to over 60% of his body, his parents hired me. The story and the initial photos almost killed me. When I met him, well, I'm never going to forget him. Let's just put it that way. I've had burn injury clients before. My heart goes out to everyone I represent. But this little boy, well, it, it motivated me to try to help his parents more than anything else I could do because I saw what they were going through. I'm attorney Paul Samico, and I want to talk to caregivers. In most cases, this means the parents of children who have been burned. As you have unfortunately observed, burns are among the most excruciating things that a human being can suffer. They're horrible, and you, the parents, watching your children having been burned or seeing the aftermath of it is perhaps even worse from a psychological standpoint than the child may be enduring on a physical level. Of course, the physical pain is just absolutely horrible. I don't pretend to know what you and your family are going through, but I've done enough of these cases representing children who've been burned, and I want to share with you some of the things that I've come across. The first and most important thing, Mr. or Miss Parent, is that you need to take care of yourself. Your life has changed because now you're devoting much of your time to taking care of your child, and that's as it should be, of course, but there's something called compassion fatigue that you might experience. Compassion fatigue means just simply that. You are compassionate, but because of that passion, that, that love, you may sooner or later find yourself fatigued and so tired, all you want to do is go to sleep for a month. Your, your child may have a long period of recovery, and I will tell you from my own experience, having watched my daughters in their youth get hurt and heal, clearly not on the level of what you are experiencing, but the harder it is for your child, the harder and more painful it is for you. It, it's hard. So I'm doing this video with the hope that even one little bit of it helps you in even the smallest way, and, and then I've done a good thing. You being stressed and tired, that's not good for anybody. I'm not saying you shouldn't give all that you have to your child, but what I am saying, you also need to take care of yourself. Remember the uh, airplane announcement, put on your mask before you put on that for your child. Why? Of course, you have to be secured first to help others. I know. I know you, you are Superman and Superwoman. I know you are. You have to be. But I'm asking you please just to keep the long term in mind and make sure that you're taking care of yourself to assure you're giving your best to your child. Let me share some observations I've had. You may feel guilty about what happened. You may feel very guilty. You may feel that it was your fault in some manner of speaking that your child is suffering this horrible, horrible incident or tragedy. I want to tell you that it's not your fault. The guilt that parents burn survivors may feel might at times be debilitating, especially in the initial days following the accident. It can make you question your parenting abilities and competence. Don't listen to that voice. Here's what is true. You cannot control everything. You're walking down the street holding hands with your child and the child breaks free and runs into the street. That's not your fault. Or you go to the restroom, even in your home, just for a moment, and your child does something that results in injury. That's not your fault. The world is full of bad things that happen to good people, and you are clearly good people. I, I know this because you're watching this to learn. It's not your fault. Change the conversation. Embrace the new situation as best you can, and that will help your child. You are the best advocate for your child. I, I cannot tell you I understand your pain, but I do know that your desire to help your child is going to be, in part, related to how your child senses you are doing. You know this. Kids pick up on everything, including your mood. 
what is that expression? A, a parent's happiness is directly related to their child's well-being. So again, change the narrative, change the conversation in your head, and both you and your child will benefit. You are the best advocate for your little one. You know your child and you can speak up for him or her in a way that nobody else can. Ask lots of questions and find options at work. This is completely new ground for you. New medical terms, procedures, ups and possible downs. You're likely to have many questions. So keep a notepad or put one on your nightstand to write down questions. Whether you're in the hospital or the burn center or with the team in the clinic during recovery, these professionals are there to help. They can help with any question, big or small. Ask questions about common things to watch for. Ask questions, and, and nobody is going to think that they're too small or unimportant. And one last thing on this issue. In many of these legal cases all across the country, the police and social services agencies want to blame you. They want to say that you were negligent. You weren't supervising your child properly. You weren't watching your child. These people are ignorant. Plain and simple, they don't understand. Their jobs are to find someone to blame. So cooperate fully with the authorities, of course, in the investigation, but understand their conclusions do not define you, nor what truly may have happened. Next, I want you to reach out and get help. You may find you're exhausted. So I'm going to share with you mom and dad or mom and mom or dad and dad. Taking care of a child who has been burned certainly can be challenging. You should reach out for help. Maybe grandparents can help. There are many, many community resources. I highly recommend asking the doctors and nurses and I'll tell you that while I'm not advocating for any one group, because there are literally a ton of wonderful groups and support in the community, but there is one group called the Phoenix Society, it's in Michigan, that you should contact and let them help you and your child and devour, please, devour their resources. They're extensive. Finally, some thoughts on what are called accident best practices for the care of your child. And again, I'm not a doctor nor a psychologist, but I'm going to share that I've picked this up from many conversations I've had with those fine types of people and from materials I've read. Actually, many of those on the Phoenix Society's website. So here we go. First, you as a parent should gauge your child and provide encouragement when and as needed. Next, these ideas begin with an understanding that both you and your child may feel the psychological and emotional effects of trauma for months or even years after the trauma occurs. Children need appropriate assistance in confronting and accepting these changes so that they can adjust and move on. Both physical and psychological changes need to be addressed honestly with children. A child's questions require truthful, simple, and to the point answers. At times, especially when severe burns are there, the outcomes of both the physical and the psychological recovery may be uncertain for a period of time. Children can better handle this uncertainty if you're honest with them, provide them with age-appropriate information, and help them to manage their feelings. Best practices, principle number one, the truth, spoken with care and compassion, speeds up the emotional healing process. Hiding or half-answering or avoiding the truth complicates grief and feeds denial. Therefore, provide what we'll call compassionate truth-telling. Principle number two, people including children, of course, are doing the best they can with the tools they have to work with. Your child is trying. If, as time goes by, he or she seems to be fatigued or resigning, remember that acceptance and encouragement are more helpful than judgment or criticism. Principle number three. 
There may be differing values and even spiritual beliefs within the family. Many families will have different values and belief systems than yours. Recognize, respect, and honor differences. Children may be angry with God after loss, and this anger needs to be allowed expression. I think God can handle our anger. Principle number four. Feelings are neither right nor wrong, good nor bad, and they are rarely logical. Feelings need to be heard respectfully and without judgment. Listen to understand. Feelings do not need to be interpreted, they don't need to be analyzed, and they don't need to be fixed. Show respect and honor feelings. One more thing before I say goodbye to you and wish you luck. I want to talk a bit about school reintegration for your child. Early things in children's development affect them for the rest of their lives. Employ the assistance of the school counselors and of the teachers because they can play an important part in your child's healing, self-esteem, and confidence. Teachers and school support staff want to see their students succeed. All they uh, although they are trained in educational and behavioral strategies, they may not be familiar with trauma-sensitive needs. You can help by developing an open and continuing relationship with your child's teacher. When you share your children's story, emphasize the importance of supporting and understanding the effects of the trauma rather than getting caught up in the narrative. Your child is a burn survivor, not a victim. Burn survivors are more than their story. Caution teachers to be sensitive to difficulties and limitations, but not to make judgments based on your child's trauma or scars. As a parent, you have an important role in helping teachers understand your child's behavior and handle possible disruptions. If that kind of thing happens, teachers who have been educated can better understand the motives behind the disruptive behavior, and they can better address that behavior effectively, better maintain the classroom environment, and better support your child's recovery. I thank you for listening to me. I hope some of this, just any part of it, was helpful to you. One final thing. Okay, I'm a lawyer. I just can keep talking. I know that. Just a reminder one more time to take care of yourself. If you think I can help you, I'd love to do that. And if you're concerned, I don't charge to talk to anyone. Best wishes.